Today, let's share the Word of God with a sermon titled, Heaven or Hell According to One's Deeds. Numerous people live on the earth, but most of them do not really believe that heaven and hell exist and that they will go there in the future, although God has already told them. That's why they don't make efforts to go to heaven or avoid terrifying hell, but only focus on this earthly life. The Bible says, we'll go to heaven or hell according to our deeds. Then, what kind of deeds will lead us to heaven? And what kind of deeds will force us to go to hell? Let's study this matter in detail today. God came to the earth in the flesh with earnest love for us. You must never go to hell. God never wants His children to suffer in eternal hell. To rescue our souls, God came to the earth in the flesh. Let's remind ourselves of that today. We'll go to heaven or hell according to our deeds. Many people wonder, where will a man go when he dies? In this three-dimensional world, people think, that everything comes to an end when a man dies. But there is another world after this life. God is teaching us through the Bible that there is another world. Then people often ask, is there anyone who has seen it? So, let's think this way. The largest known star discovered by scientists is VV Cephei. But have you been to that star? You've never been there. You've never lived there. Yet, you believe it to be true because scientists say that. People believe what scientists say but they don't believe in heaven and hell, which God teaches about. Everyone, when a man dies, there is judgment. And after judgment, he is destined to go to either heaven or hell. Because people don't realize it, Jesus came to the earth to enlighten them. God granted the forgiveness of sins to heavenly children who were destined to suffer eternal hell and changed their course from hell to heaven. God came to the earth in the flesh to change our destination. He was crucified to take away our sins. Since we're living in a three-dimensional world, we cannot fathom higher dimensional worlds like the fourth or fifth dimension, we cannot easily understand their existence. However, people believe the words of scientists 100%. If scientists say, there is a star called VV Cephei, people think, oh, there is such a big star? Even though they've never been there or seen it. The Bible is the Word of God, the creator of the heavens and earth. But people do not believe it. Isn't that why those who believe are blessed? The spiritual world truly exists. Today, let's think about heaven and hell, which everyone will go according to his deeds. To those who live a faithful and righteous life, according to God's teaching, the door to heaven will be opened. And to those who do evil and live against God's will, the door to eternal hell will be opened. We must believe that fact. Heaven and hell exist in the world where we will go after this life. There will be a crossroad where some will go to heaven and some will go to hell. 
In Luke chapter 16, let's see the teaching about heaven and hell. God taught us when He came in the flesh 2,000 years ago. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was led a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. Here, Abraham represents God. This means the beggar was carried to God's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was in torment. The rich man entered hell. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Lazarus entered heaven, and the rich man went to hell. Through this parable, God explains what happened to the rich man. Verse 25. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they would not also come to this place of torment. Please send someone so that my family won't come to hell. You can resurrect Lazarus. He can go and testify to this. Now the rich man and Lazarus are experiencing another dimensional world, not the three-dimensional world. They were buried on the earth, which means their life was over in the three-dimensional world. When they were moved, into the next world. One man was carried to Abraham's side, that is, God's side, and received much comfort, and the other man was in torment in hell. Jesus explained these through the parable. Let's continue with verse 29. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Even if there was a person who has seen and experienced the fourth or fifth dimension, and went back to the third dimension in the flesh and spoke about such worlds, people wouldn't believe him. They've never experienced such worlds. They would have no idea even if the person explained to them so many times. They would think he's just a dreamer, talking nonsense, even though he has seen it and experienced it. Through the parable, Jesus let us know that heaven and hell exist and urged us to practice deeds that will lead us to heaven, not the deeds that will lead us to hell. Because people didn't understand at all. No matter how hard he explained it spiritually, he came in the flesh in the same situation with ours and taught us about heaven and hell. Let's see Mark chapter 9, verse 40. Whoever is not against us is for us. 
I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Jesus is telling us that we should remove all the deeds that will lead us to hell even if it causes us pain and difficulty. He's explaining heaven and hell in connection to Luke chapter 16, that it is better for us to go to heaven without an arm. If the arm causes us to sin, then go to hell with the arm. Jesus knows everything about heaven and hell. He knows the pain of hell and also knows the joy, peace, and happiness of heaven. But to us, who are living in this three-dimensional world, such worlds are closed. We cannot see heaven and hell. Although such worlds truly exist, we cannot see them with our sinful eyes. Just as scientists deliver knowledge about the universe to people, God is delivering knowledge about the spiritual world to His children. By coming in the flesh as the one who has experienced all those worlds, He says, it is better for you to go to heaven even if you have to remove your body part than to go to hell. God wants us to stop all the deeds that will lead us to hell, doesn't He? God urges us repeatedly that we should get rid of the deeds deserving hell so that we can surely go to heaven. These words are recorded not only in the Gospels, but also in Revelation, written by Apostle John. Let's see Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive. Into where? Into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. The one who deluded those who have received the mark of the beast and worshipped idols is thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. In other words, eternal hell. Let's move to chapter 20, verse 9. It's about hell, which John saw in a vision. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Such a world surely exists. So God showed a revelation to John and also explained it to us by coming to the earth in the flesh. People believe whatever scientists say, but they do not pay attention to the Word of God, who is thoroughly knowledgeable about the spiritual world. They say, there's no way such a world exists. 
But they don't say. There's no way such a gigantic star exists. It's a million billion times bigger than the Earth. When scientists say, we've researched the universe and discovered a big star, people just believe them. But then how come they don't believe the words of the Bible? The rich man in the parable in Luke chapter 16 didn't believe that such a world could exist. He enjoyed everything. He pursued all kinds of pleasures on the earth. He must have ruled over people too. But when he was buried and moved to the next world, there was no heaven prepared for him. Thrown into the perpetual hell, tormented day and night, the rich man said, Please, let my family not come to this place of torment. Please resurrect Lazarus and send them to my home so that they can know there is heaven and hell. Please let him enlighten them. Can he go there and prevent them from coming here? Jesus is earnestly teaching that there is heaven and hell. Sometimes, however, not only people in the world, but also our brothers and sisters in Zion forget about heaven and hell. Whenever we do something, we need to think, will this action lead me to heaven or hell? It's because God will determine who will enter heaven on the basis of what? On the basis of our deeds. We will go to heaven or hell according to our deeds. That's why we should live a godly and holy life on the earth and fill our life with gracious faith in the eyes of God. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. As I looked, thrones were set in place. It's the throne of God. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and his wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and what were opened? The books were opened. In the book of Revelation, it was written, that will be judged according to what was written in the books. What Prophet Daniel saw was the same as what Apostle John saw. Daniel and John are not contemporaries. They lived at very different times. Daniel is a prophet in the Old Testament. John is a disciple of Jesus in the New Testament. Although they lived at different times, they received the same vision. Here too, it's written, thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Then, what will God do according to what's written in the books? He would judge. God already let us know that through the book of Revelation. Right? Let's confirm it in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades 
gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what? According to what he had done. Then, death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. We should remember that the lake of fire, in other words, eternal hell definitely exists. God did not make heaven and hell or good and evil to frighten us. It's because heaven must never be corrupted again by such people as did the morning star long ago. To make the eternal glorious world without death, curse, pain, and agony, God made hell and removed all kinds of evil. Because God doesn't want His children to be thrown into hell, He came to the earth in the flesh 2,000 years ago. In this last age, mother as well as father came to lead us to eternal heaven. Shouldn't we follow them wherever they lead us? Let's see 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home, in the body, or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due Him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. It must be good in God's perspective. Those who do good in the eyes of God will enter heaven, and those who do evil will be judged with everlasting punishment. Each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Shall we also read Ecclesiastes chapter 12? We need to see many verses today. Let's see verse 13. Now, all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is what? This is the whole duty of man. People are angels who committed sins in heaven and were expelled to the earth. They are souls who committed crimes in heaven. That's why they should learn to fear God and keep God's commands on the earth. This is the whole duty of man. And verse 14 reads, For God will bring every deed into what? Into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. God sees everything, even the things we've done secretly. He will bring every deed into judgment, including such things, whether it is good or evil. Let's move on to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 6 reads, God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism. Here it is written, there will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, but glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. The Bible tells that God will give each person the heavenly kingdom or hell according to what he has done. But many people say, if you show me heaven and hell, then I will believe. Jesus talked about this with his disciples 2,000 years ago. 
Jesus appeared before his disciples on the third day after he was dead and showed them the living evidence of resurrection. But Thomas was not present. When he appeared after his resurrection, he didn't believe it at all, but said, I would never believe unless I see him. So Jesus appeared before Thomas and showed his hands, saying, See the nail marks in my hands. He also showed his side, saying, See the spear mark. Touching the marks, Thomas recognized Jesus, who rose from the dead. He was startled. He finally accepted Jesus' resurrection and came to believe. What did Jesus say to Thomas then? Because you have seen me, you have believed. As you see with your eyes, you finally believe. But believing without seeing is the true faith. Let's see John chapter 20, verse 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Believing without seeing is possible when we have absolute trust in God's Word. But some say, no matter how precisely the words of God are recorded, unless I see, I won't believe. If they can believe after seeing, anyone can believe rationally. But the world of faith is different. We trust the words of scientists. The greatest star that has been discovered is VVCFIA. As we trust scientists, we believe what they say. Likewise, because we trust in God, we believe there is heaven and hell that God spoke about, right? They are the contents about hell. In Revelation chapter 20 and 19, and in Luke chapter 16, Seeing all the contents, we must never belong to those who are destined to go to hell. Shouldn't we have good faith enough to enter heaven? There are definitely these two worlds. So no matter what happens, we must never be thrown into the world where there is eternal pain and suffering. Then, what is the kingdom of heaven like? Revelation chapter 21 says that it is the place of no more death. And what else? There will be no more mourning or crying or pain. Only eternal joy and pleasure exist. Through Matthew chapter 13, Jesus explains as much as we can understand in the three-dimensional world. Let's go to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then, in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. How much was he excited? In the old days, the people of Israel had the right to deal with their possessions as they pleased. I don't know how the national law has changed today, but Jesus told us that parable. While working, he discovered something in the field. When he opened it, there was a great treasure. The only way to get the treasure legally was to buy the field. So he paid for the field and took it. What do you think he felt like? 
He must have felt like flying, thinking, Wow, I've obtained this great treasure by buying this field. In short, heaven gives us this kind of joy. He explains through this simple parable that heaven is the world full of joy. Let's see verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. It was the pearl he had wanted and eagerly desired. Traveling around the world, he couldn't find any good one. But it was found in a certain shop. The joy he felt when he sold all his possessions and bought it. What was the joy likened to? To the kingdom of heaven. The Bible awakens us that the place where such joy springs up day after day is the kingdom of heaven. As it is this kind of world, God destroys death, pain, and mourning and gives us only eternal life and blessings. In this world, people are living not knowing about heaven and hell. They only focus on how to eat three meals a day on the earth and how to get their dwelling place. They only focus on such things all their life. If they knew that there is heaven and hell, they should be ready for the world they will go to later. But they do not get ready for it at all. If there is a family trip tomorrow, some will pack the night before in advance. And some, others may be idle, without preparing anything, thinking, someone else will do it. It is the same with us in regard to the spiritual world. If we go there tomorrow, what should we do? We believe that eternal kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So we must be ready for it. But still many people do not know there is heaven and hell. Shouldn't we teach them since we were taught first? Jesus was so distressed that He Himself came to the earth rather than sending angels. He Himself came to make known to us heaven and hell. Shouldn't we have the mind of Christ and go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth so that we can lead the footsteps of those who are heading toward hell to heaven? Everyone, we have the teachings of Christ. Heaven and hell surely exist. If your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out, not to be thrown into hell. We should understand the earnest heart of Christ contained in these words. According to what each person has done, he will be sent to heaven or hell. So, we should do good deeds, worthy to enter heaven. And if there is a member who keeps doing what deserves hell, let us quickly let him turn to the right path. By doing that, let us practice righteousness all the more. When we live in accordance with God's will, we will be led to heaven in holiness and godliness. To those who don't know the Sabbath, teach the truth of Sabbath. To those who don't know the Passover, teach the truth of the new covenant. To those who don't know the new name, teach the truth of the new name so that they too can follow the will of father and mother and be led to heaven. That is the will of father and mother in the age of the Holy Spirit. Go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth and deliver this news. And what next? Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Everything God commanded us to do is what leads us who were destined to be thrown to hell, to heaven. Right? Let us walk the path of father and mother 
with gratitude and joy, according to the laws of the new covenant. This year, let us preach to one billion and even to all seven billion people and enter the eternal kingdom of heaven, asking you to make efforts for this work. I would like to finish today's sermon. Thank you very much.